to destroy the works of the evil one and the kingdom of darkness with light and to rescue men from the law of sin this is the gospel of christ to proclaim good news unto the poor the gospel of christ spreading the soul-saving message of jesus and now ben bailey this is the gospel of christ in john 7 verse 17 jesus said if anyone wants to do his will he shall know concerning the doctrine whether I speak on my own authority or whether it is from God. Jesus here taught us the importance of good doctrine, making sure that what we're following is from God, not from men. And so today we welcome you to our study of fundamentals of the Christian faith. In this series of lessons, we're going to be talking about and thinking from the scripture about some basic Christian doctrine that every person wants to know about and live according to the Word of God in their life. And so we're so glad that you've joined us. We hope that you'll get your your Bible and have it handy as we're going to look to the Word of God together in our study. Today's lesson, as always, is being brought to you by members and congregations of the Church of Christ. The Lord's Church in your area would love for you to stop by and visit their assembly. If you've got a, a Bible question, you'd like to know more about the church, maybe you'd like to study about the plan of salvation or any subject. You'll find people at the Church of Christ who'd be happy to sit down and study the Word of God with you and discuss spiritual things with you. Here at the Gospel of Christ, we'd also love to help you in your journey to know God and His Word better. Visit, won't you visit our website, thegospelofchrist.com. From there, you can find a wide variety of good Bible study materials. We have audio lessons, video lessons, written material, transcripts, study questions. All of our information on our website, thegospelofchrist.com, is available free of charge, 24-7. You can access it anytime. And if you'd like to have a copy of today's lesson or any of our previous lessons. We also make those available to you free of charge. Just go to our website, fill out a media request form, and we'll be happy to send that to you in the mail. If you'd like to have a digital download, you can get that from the website also. And friend, in our fast-paced world today, we want to encourage you to check out our apps, both for the Android and Apple phones. They're available in the respective marketplaces, and you can get those there as well. Today we're thinking about the idea of good doctrine. Jesus said the importance of following his doctrine is that anyone, anyone wants to do God's will, he's got to know where the teaching's coming from. He's got to know that it's from God and not from men. John 7, verse 17. But when we think about doctrine, when we talk about doctrine, that's a word that maybe we don't use as much in our language today. What is doctrine? What does doctrine mean? The word doctrine comes from the Greek word didache, which simply means teaching. When we talk about doctrine, we're simply talking about, it's a, a Bible way of talking about teaching. What teaching? Who's teaching? What kind of teaching are we going to follow? And do we have the right teaching? And so we want, we want good teaching that's from God, and that's so basic as it relates to fundamental Christianity. Now, we begin by thinking about this idea. Whose teaching is it that we want to follow? In the Scripture, there are three types of teaching that are mentioned, but only one of them is approved. There is the teaching of Christ, 2 John 9, whoever transgresses and does not follow the, the teaching of Christ does not have God, and there is the teaching of God, Titus chapter 2, verse 10, we want to follow the doctrine of God. And so the major emphasis we put on teaching is let's make sure we're following the teaching of Christ and the teaching of God. But there are two other types of doctrine or teaching that is mentioned in the New Testament. There is the doctrine which is referred to as a doctrine of demons in the New Testament, which was a departure from the original faith. 1 Timothy 4 verses 1 through 5 
Paul said some were forbidding to marry and commanding to abstain from meats, which God created to be received with thanksgiving, and those were referred to as the doctrines of demons. They originated in the halls of hell. They are not from God, and they are not going to help. They're not true teaching of God, and they're not going to help men get closer to God. And then there's a third doctrine, and that is the doctrine or teaching of men. We want to beware of the doctrine of the Pharisees, as mentioned in Matthew 15, 9, the teaching of men, Matthew 16, verse 2, and especially the teachings of men that are contrary to the Word of God, Revelation chapter 2, verses 14 and 15. And so as we think about the sources of our doctrine, let's realize the only doctrine that's going to help us is the doctrine from God. What type of doctrine do Christians need to follow? The scriptures use the word sound doctrine. 1 Timothy 1 verse 10, 2 Timothy 4 verse 3, we want to follow sound doctrine or teaching. That's the type of doctrine we need, but what exactly is meant by the idea of sound? The word sound in the New Testament comes from a Greek word whose root meaning is healthy. Well, that which promotes good health. The, the, the type of doctrine we need is a healthy, sound, well doctrine. Christian doctrine is a healthy doctrine in that it heals man from the, and helps him to be uh, saved from the greatest sickness ever, sin itself. Listen to what Paul said. In Romans 6, 17, Paul said, God be thanked. Though you were the slaves of sin, yet you obeyed from the heart that form of doctrine to which you were delivered, and having been set free from sin, you became slaves of righteousness. And so in that picture, as it relates to doctrine, you've got people who at one point were entangled in sin and the sickness involved in that, and yet they obeyed the right doctrine and they were released or set free from the bondage to sin. And so the type of doctrine we need stems from God and is based in the Bible. Now, that then leads us to our next question. If we want sound doctrine from God, where do we get that doctrine? Are we going to look to books of men? Are we going to look to the opinions and ideas of men? Where do you get good, sound doctrine teaching from God? Friend, as we mentioned, our doctrine must come from God. John 7, verse 17. If anyone wants to do his will, he's got to know where he's getting the doctrine. If it's of God or if someone's speaking on their own authority. Well, for Christians, we can know our teaching is sound and healthy and right if it's from the Bible. Our teaching is found in the inspired pages of of the Holy Scripture. Listen to 2 Timothy 3, verse 16 and 17. All Scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable. Profitable for what? For doctrine, for correction, for teaching, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be complete, thoroughly equipped for every good work. The inspired Word of God that's where our doctrine's located. That's where our teaching comes from. And friend, please understand today, there is only one doctrine. Romans 16, 17, there were some who were not follower teaching things that were contrary to the doctrine of Christ. And Paul said, we're not to have anything to do with those type of people. 1 Timothy 1, verse 3, we're to look for pure, sincere doctrine found in the pages of the Bible. And so, friend, our encouragement today, as we think about this first basic lesson on fundamentals of the faith is, let's make sure we have the right doctrine and that it's based on the Bible. You know, there's a lot of people who will say, you need to believe this, or you need to teach this, or you need to think this way. If I can't find that in the Bible, and friend, I don't need to follow that. I only want to do what the Bible says. As it relates to the local congregation, there's a certain sense in which elders have a responsibility in the local church as it relates to 
good doctrine and following the right doctrine. In 1 Timothy chapter 5, we want elders in the Lord's church who are going to labor and who are going to work in the right doctrine and who are going to follow the teaching of Christ. Listen to 1 Timothy chapter 5, and I want you to notice what the Bible says about the responsibility of elders and doctrine. 1 Timothy 5 verse 17, Let the elders who rule well be counted worthy of double honor, especially those who labor in the word and teaching. Elders have a responsibility as it relates to God's doctrine in that they want to labor in that and that they want to teach good doctrine. Acts chapter 6 verse 4, of the men who are selected to help the church, they're to be good teachers of that doctrine. The elders were going to give themselves to the Word of God and to prayer, or the apostles were in that context. context. And thus, elders have the responsibility of keeping the flock pure, convicting and exhorting those who teach things which are contradictory to sound doctrine. Titus chapter 1 verse number 9 says, and so at the top as it relates to the uh, uh, autonomous congregation, the local congregation, elders play a big role in disseminating that doctrine and making sure that the right doctrine is taught. But as it relates to God's doctrine, we also want to realize that gospel preachers and teachers of the Word of God have a responsibility to doctrine. The Bible says in 1 Timothy 4 verse 6 that a good minister of Jesus Christ must carefully follow the doctrine of Christ. If, 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 if a person is going to teach what God wants him to teach, he's got to be careful to follow the doctrine of Christ and not the teachings and ideas of men. In fact, Paul would say in 1 Timothy 4 verse 13 that that's part of a minister's job is to give attention to doctrine. Paul said, until I come, give attention to doctrine, reading, exhortation. Doctrine, it, teaching is a big part of where we want to put our time and attention because that's what helps people get closer to God. And as always, a good minister of Jesus Christ must make sure his doctrine and his life are in harmony. Paul said in 1 Corinthians 9 verse 27, I, I buffet my body and bring it into subjection, lest when I've preached to others, I myself should become a castaway. We've got to make sure that our life also adds up to that. And so as we think about gospel preachers, we want to make sure that as we preach sound doctrine, we want to preach the Word of God. The Word of God is where that doctrine is found. Titus 2 verse 1, Paul said to the young evangelist Titus, As for you, speak the things which are proper for sound doctrine. 1 Peter 4 11, if any man speaks, let him speak as the oracles of God. And so to really promote good, healthy teaching, we need elders and we need Bible class teachers. We need preachers who will preach and teach what the Bible says, not the opinions and ideas of men. Now, having said that, there are a lot of warnings in the New Testament that relate to false doctrine. As Christians, I, we have to beware of any doctrine that places man's teachings and ideas above the teachings and ideas of God. Let me have you turn your attention to Matthew chapter 16. And I want you to see what Jesus says here about this type of doctrine. Look in Matthew 16, verse number 12. The Word of God records this. Then they understood that Jesus did not tell them to beware of the leaven of bread, but of the doctrine or teaching of the Pharisees and the Sadducees. Jesus here is warning his followers and the people he's working with, don't get caught up in following these teachings of these two groups that are not a true according to the Word of God. And, and the, the Pharisees and the Sadducees, they often would put the emphasis on their tradition, on what their scholars and rabbis might be teaching, and they completely disregarded at times what the Word of God said. Friend, we need to make sure that the doctrine we teach isn't based off of man's books and man's ideas and man's teachings, 
but rather on the teaching of Almighty God. Secondly, as it relates to false doctrine, we need to make sure that things like fables and genealogies and and heretical matters that people often might focus on don't become what we focus on as Christians. Notice what the Bible says in 1 Timothy chapter 1. Paul gives a warning to Timothy as it relates to this idea in 1 Timothy chapter 1. And as a young evangelist, there might be the temptation to listen to some of these things. But notice what Paul says in 1 Timothy 1 verse 3. Now I urged you when I went into Macedonia, remain in Ephesus that you may charge some that they teach no other doctrine, nor give heed to fables and endless genealogies, which to cause disputes rather than godly edification, which is in the faith. And so Paul says, don't teach any other doctrine and don't listen to these fables. Don't listen to these old wives tales or genealogies or whatever you might like to call it. Don't get caught up. In all these things that we may or may not know about, focus on what we can know. Stay true to the doctrine of Jesus Christ. And the reason being that there are such strong warnings in the Bible about false doctrine is that it can condemn someone's soul and actually sear their conscience. Of those who are following the doctrines of demons in 1 Timothy 4, Paul said they were in jeopardy of having their conscience seared with a hot iron and being lost. Friend, false doctrine is what's going to cause people who may be buying into these things to be separated from God and sear their conscience to the truth. And so as always, just as it was in the Bible, Hebrews 13, 9 says, In that day and age there were strange doctrines, and today... There are a lot of strange doctrines of men, but Christians need to focus on the doctrine of Christ. And friend, we want to emphasize this because the importance of Christ's doctrine. Why is Christ's doctrine and, and the teaching of the Bible so important to follow? Well, friend, it's the only way you can know you're doing God's will. If anyone wants to know His will, do His will, he shall know concern the teaching. The only way I can know I'm doing God's will is by doing what the teaching of Christ tells me. Secondly, Christ's doctrine is so important because it's what sets us free from sin. The teaching of Christ, not the ideas and opinions of men, is what sets us free from sin. Romans 6, 17 again says, God be thanked. Though you were the slaves of sin, yet you obeyed from the heart that form of doctrine which you were delivered. Christ's doctrine, which is taught to people, is what sets us free from sin. The teachings of men cannot do that. And friend, good doctrine, Christ's doctrine, following it is the only way you can know you've got God as your Father. Listen to 2 John 9. It's a warning. John says, Whoever does not follow the doctrine of Christ does not have God. As it, whoever transgresses and goes beyond the doctrine of Christ does not have God as his Father. Friend, the only way I can know I'm in a right relationship with God, that I'm letting God lead me and Him be uh, my Father and I be a child of God, is to follow His teaching. And so the doctrine of Christ, that's what will produce godliness in my life and in yours. Now, with that being true, the Christian has an awesome responsibility to doctrine. Part of that responsibility is to make sure that I follow that doctrine in my life. I want you to see the example of the New Testament church. Here's part of my responsibility to Christ's teaching. Look in your Bible and notice with me Acts chapter 2. And I want you to see what the Scripture says in verse 42 about the early church. They continued steadfastly, notice, in the apostles' doctrine, fellowship, breaking of bread, and in prayers. Following my responsibility to Christ's teaching is I want to learn it and I want to follow it. I have a responsibility to study the doctrine of Christ. I have a responsibility to learn that and try to live it every day in my life. You see, the scriptures describe the doctrine of Christ as, type of, uh, as a type of an adornment 
to be worn so that it can beautify one's life and shine forth to others to see. Uh, of certain Christians, it is said that they are to adorn the doctrine of Christ. Titus 2 verse 10. What's that mean? You're to adorn it. You're, you're to put it on. And that beautifies our life. And when others see us living that, that gives God the honor and the glory. Remember Matthew 5 verse number 16. Jesus said, Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father. Living the doctrine of Christ every day brings beauty and honor to God and His teaching. And friend, I want to study every day, and I want to give attention. Part of my responsibility is I want to study every day, and I want to give attention to the teaching of Christ. 1 Timothy 4, verse 12, Paul said, Till I come, give attention to doctrine. That's something we've got to do. 2 Timothy 2.15, study to show yourself approved unto Christ, a workman who does not need to be ashamed. Now, friend, with all the things we mentioned today, what are some of the doctrines specifically that a Christian wants to give special attention to uh, and, and make sure that he's following in his life? Friend, we want to do this as children of God. One of the things we realize is that God's doctrine of authority is something all men need to hear. Friend, a prominent teaching of Christ in the Bible, Mark chapter 1 verse 27 says, is that He had power over all and even power over the demons. And so when we think about God's authority, we want to realize a teaching of Christ that needs special attention is the authority of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Jesus has all authority. Matthew 28 verse 18, all authority has been given to me, Jesus said, in heaven and on earth. That authority comes down to man in the pages of the Bible. Jesus said, he who rejects me and does not receive my words, has that which judges him. The word that I have spoken will judge him in the last day. Friend, we also want to follow the doctrine of Christ as it relates to salvation only in the authority and power in the name of Jesus. Acts 4 verses 11 and 12. Peter and John are put on trial. They're brought before the uh, leaders of that day, and they're asked, by what power or by what authority have you done these things? And Peter says, it's in the name of Jesus. Uh, he's the chief cornerstone, as it were. And then he says these words in Acts 4, verse 12. Nor is there salvation in any other, for there's no other name under heaven given among men by which we must be saved. Friend, we've got to make sure that we recognize Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father except by Him. If people are going to be saved, it'll only be in Jesus' way. It'll only be with His teaching. It'll only be through His sacrifice and not the teachings, ideas of men. And then we want to focus on doctrine as it relates to the afterlife, as it relates to uh, the resurrection, heaven and hell, and all the things that go along with that. You see, in Acts 17, there were doctrines that were wrong about the resurrection, and yet Jesus clearly taught, as well as Paul, that there is a day coming when all men will have to give an account, and He's appointed proof of that to all men by raising Christ from the dead. The doctrine of the resurrection, the doctrine of the afterlife, the teaching about heaven and hell, friend, those are clear Bible doctrines. One day, Jesus said in John 5, verse 28 and 29, one day all who are in the grave will come forth. Those who have done good to the resurrection of life, those who have done evil, to the resurrection of condemnation. We're all going to live somewhere forever if we obey the gospel and become a Christian and try to walk in the light. A friend, we can have the hope and joy of being with God in heaven, hearing those, those wonderful words, well done, good and faithful servant. But 
if we don't. If we let sin reign in our mortal bodies and, and we give in to our lust and passion, we can be separated forever from God and suffer the eternal consequences of those decisions. And so as we think about doctrine, we want to make some final admonitions, some final encouragements as it relates to Christ's doctrine. Friend, a sign of spiritual maturity that we're growing as we ought to is that one is becoming steadfast in his doctrine. Ephesians 4, verse 14, we're to be steadfast, solid in our doctrine. Christians ought to be able to study the Word of God, know it well enough that we're not like that stereotypical reed that's shaken in the wind, but rather we're like that giant oak tree that's steadfast, unshakable in its doctrine. Part of an encouragement we want to make is that we want to realize that it's possible for men to blaspheme God and His doctrine by the way they live their life. 1 Timothy 6 verse 10, some were in jeopardy of blaspheming God and His doctrine by their lifestyle. When I know what the teaching of Christ is, I want to do that because I don't want to blaspheme God and His doctrine in my life. And friend, let's realize this as well. We live in a day and age. We live in a time when sound doctrine is not popular. There are many religious uh, charlatans. There are many religious deceivers in the world today. 2 Timothy 4, verse 3, they have itching ears. They teach doctrine, teach doctrine that's not according to the ideas of men. And we want to make sure that we follow the teaching of Christ. And so our hope and prayer today is that each one of us will give special attention to the teaching of Christ. If you're not a child of God, more than anything today, we'd love to talk to you more. We hope that you'll visit the church in your area. We'd be happy to study with you about God's plan of salvation. If we can help you in any way, please don't hesitate to contact us and may God help each of us to live our lives in such a way that we bring glory and honor to God, His doctrine, and ultimately to the Lord Jesus Christ. You may have just joined our program and are wondering, what is the Gospel of Christ? The Gospel of Christ is an evangelistic work of the churches of Christ that reaches the whole world with the Gospel through TV, streaming, free media, and internet. Our motto is truly to take the whole gospel to the whole world. We believe in having a book, chapter, and verse for everything we say and do. And unlike many religious groups today, we're concerned about lost souls, not your wallet. This is the Gospel of Christ. Visit thegospelofchrist.com for a host of Bible study materials, including audio and video of our lessons. Request your copy of today's lesson by completing a media request form online. On-demand downloads are also available at thegospelofchrist.com. We would love to hear from you, email us at mail at thegospelofchrist.com or call 844-6-GOSPEL. You may also write us at the address on your screen. Search your app store for The Gospel of Christ to access our mobile app on your this smartphone. Is the